Hi again, it's Tim, your Living Sky Guy from the Paris of the Prairies, beautiful Saskatoon. And it's July, and normally in July I pretty much write off most things astronomical, just because we got these gorgeous, gorgeous long summer days and these incredibly short, short summer nights. So there's usually not a lot that excites me in the month of July, except for this year. And this year we got a couple of things happening that I want you to take a look at. First and foremost, and it's happening right now, is a comet. That's correct. After a year and a bit of false starts and a whole bunch of comets that sort of came up and saying, this could be something, this could be something, this could be something, we finally have something that's something! And that is Comet Neowise. Comet Neowise is just past the sun right now and it is rising right now with a gorgeous tail in the north northeastern sky. So that means, yes, early in the morning, you're going to be setting an alarm. You want to get out to where you've got a clear view of that north northeastern sky about two hours before sunrise, which means in Saskatoon, 3 a.m. But believe me, it's worth it. This comet right now, through a pair of binoculars, 7x50 or 10x50s, is easily visible as long as you know where you're looking. You're looking at that north northeastern sky, you're looking for the constellation Auriga, and the star Capella. Just look for the brightest star that's high up in the north northeastern sky. That's Capella. Then come down and to its left. And that's the general area where you're going to find this comet. And what you're looking for with your binoculars is something above the horizon with a tail that's pointing almost straight up. Right now it's at a bit of an angle, but it's going to be starting to swing over as it moves across that northern sky. So as I said, right now it's visible in the early mornings and as the, as the month progresses and it's working its way past the sun and closer to us, the hopes are a couple of things. A, that tail's gonna get even brighter and larger and B, that it's gonna last through to the end of the month, that being the end of the month of July. As I said right now, it is easily visible with binoculars, but once you've spotted it and if you're in an area where it's kind of dark, you can see it with the naked eye. I know for a fact because I've seen it myself. It's also very easy to photograph. If you got your DSLR or mirrorless camera with something like a 135 or 200 millimeter telephoto lens, you can get some gorgeous photographs. If you got more telephoto capability, all the better. A little caveat about comets. Comets are like cats. They both have tails and they both do what they want. They are not predictable. So what sounds like it's something that will last throughout the entire month could fizzle out any minute now. So my suggestion is do not wait. Get out there soon. Now the other thing that's happening to two of our visible planets. Those two planets are the planets Jupiter and the planet Saturn. And both of those planets are going into what is known as greatest opposition, which is just a fancy way of saying they're gonna be as close to Earth as they're gonna be this year. And for Jupiter, that's happening on the 14th of July. And what does that mean for us? It means first off, it's gonna appear as bright as it's going to be all throughout the year. And if you take a look at it through your binoculars, you're gonna be able to see first off, the fact that it's gonna look like a disc, not a pinpoint light source. And at either side of that disc, you're gonna see some other tiny little pinpoint light sources, anywhere from two to four of them, which are the Galilean moons that orbit around Jupiter. So with binoculars, 7x50 or 10x50s, very easily seen. Put a small telescope to it and that orb of the planet's going to get a little bit larger and if we've got a good clear night with a steady atmosphere, you'll be able to see some of the cloud bands, which will essentially look like pastel colored stripes going along it. And if we're really lucky and it's turned our way, the great red spot. So that's the 14th of July. Go a week later to the 20th in July, and Saturn is doing exactly the same thing. There, It's going into greatest elongation, getting closest to us that it's going to be all year. Once again, point your binoculars at it. Instead of a disc, you're gonna see a flattened oval, of course, caused by the rings, but put a small telescope to it, and that oval will break into where you'll actually see some demarcation between the rings and the planet itself. 
Higher powered telescopes on either planets would also give you greater detail, but it's just an amazing view. In all cases, definitely worth the look. So, July, right off month, not this year. Comet Neowise, hopefully, fingers crossed, lasting all month. And Saturn and Jupiter, both in the brightest view that they're going to be all year, tracking from the southeast all the way all night to the southwest. Beautiful targets to look at in the case of the planets, easily visible in all sorts of lighting situations. And as for the comet, well, the darker the lighting you're in, the better your view is going to be. So set your alarm, get out of bed, get out there and have some fun under the night sky and join me in enjoying July for a change. If you want to continue on this voyage of discovery with me, please click on the subscribe button. And you can also follow my personal exploits on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Just search for Living Sky Guy. Clear skies, everyone. Mm -hmm.